Hello. So this is part two of the programming your MTS1 uh, video series that I'm making. In part one, which you can access if you click over here, uh, I've covered how to install the entire development environment, uh, downloading the uh, load SDK, uh, and setting anything up. And in part two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a very simple plugin for the NTS-1. Uh, and I've decided that we're gonna do a uh, noise gate. All right, so the first step is to create a folder for a code base. So I'm actually inside the location where I've installed the uh, Log SDK, and we're gonna go inside the platform new tech uh, test folders, and we're actually gonna clone one of the folders and use that as our starting point. Okay, so we're gonna CD into platform, new tech digital, mod effects, and tests. So here we have a couple of example, and what I'm gonna do is copy one of them and use it as a starting point. So copy one is our LFO into gate. All right, so what do we have here? Okay, so inside these, so we have three files. The make file, which we talked about in the first video. The manifest, which is gonna be the instruction for the plugin loader. And then project NK, which is where we're gonna make local modification to the make file. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna name effect, which is gonna be called Gate so version 1.0, sure that's gonna work. Uh, it's mod effects, platform is okay. Uh, and then in the project.mk file, we're also gonna do the same thing. This controls the file name of the plugin. The other one was controlling the actual name as it shows up on the device. Uh, so we're also gonna call this gate. Uh, and then the source file, instead of being a C++ file, we're gonna make a very simple C file and we're gonna put it locally in the same folder as we had the rest of the information. Okay, so we have projects called gate. The source is gonna be locally in a file called gate.c and we can save this, that should be good. And now, just like all cooking show, I'm actually gonna copy a file that I had prepared earlier and we're gonna walk through it. So this is a C file uh, and I'm gonna walk through the process I use to actually write this. So the very first thing is to include the library that you need for the particular type of plugin that you're writing. So in my case, this is a mod effects uh, plugin. Our gate is gonna be a, mod, a modulation effect. Uh, so I'm including the user mod effects.h file. Uh, so you need three functions for the plugin to work. The first one is your init function. In our particular case, we don't actually need to do anything in the init function. So it's a very, very simple plugin. This is where you would put uh, any type of code that you would need when the plugin is uh, getting loaded or things that you can pre-compute at load time and don't need to compute every time the uh, process is called. Uh, the second function is the callback for processing. This is called every time the synth has a packet of uh, samples for you to process. In general, it gives you a, a block of uh, sample as opposed to one sample at a time. And then the third uh, function is the parameter callback, and this is called whenever someone touches and modify the uh, parameters. In our particular case, we're only using the processing function and the parameter function. So let's start with the parameter function because it's actually the simplest uh, of the two. So in the parameter function, you will get an index uh, and a value. Uh, the index corresponds to which of the parameter is getting modified and the value is a float from zero to one uh, that corresponds to that value. It's actually not a float, it's another format, so we need to convert it. So that's the first thing that we're doing. So the code itself is very simple. So we have a switch statement. Uh, case zero is gonna be parameter A. In our case, we're gonna use parameter A to control the gate time. So how long does the gate stay open when we get triggered? The second case is gonna be parameter B, which is the threshold, and it's a float value that we're gonna use from zero to one, which is basically what we're gonna compare our samples against to see if we can open the gate or not. So in this particular case, we're making the range of the gate time be uh, from one millisecond to a thousand millisecond. We know that the synth is working at 48 kilohertz. Uh, so in our case, it's gonna mean that one millisecond is 48 samples. So the math that turns out to be, we're gonna add, so that add one, so we always start with one millisecond, and then we're gonna take the value and use it to multiply the rest of the sample, which is be a thousand minus one, 900 
99 and multiply by 48 because 48 sample is one milliseconds and we return that back. So that should be basically an integer how long the gate should stay open in samples. And the second one, we don't even have to do anything. We're just translating into a float the value that's coming in and using that for the gate transition. So those two parameters are actually global variables that we've declared on top of the thing, right? So we have our gate time here, which we default to 10 millisecond, and we have our gate threshold, which we also default to 0.5, which is basically half intensity. So that was for the parameter function. So this is the main uh, process function. Uh, what we get, an input buffer, an output buffer, there's a sub input buffer and a sub output buffer. Those two variables are actually uh, for the prolog only. The SDK is kind of weird for that. The prolog actually, it's a bi-temporal synth, and I guess they figured out that the best way to implement that is to force everybody that writes plugin to actually process two sets of buffer as opposed to have the plugin loaded twice, which is really weird, but it is what it is. Uh, and then we have frames, which is going to tell you how many frames there are in the buffer. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that the NTS one and all the other ones are stereo effects. So what we're going to get in the buffer is not only a single channel, but we're going to get two channels of data and the channels are interleaved. So the first sample is a left sample, then there's a right sample, and then we go left, right, left, right, left, right. So the number of frames is the total number of frames which needs to be multiplied by two for a total number of samples in the buffer. All right, so let's go into the body of the function itself. The first thing that we're doing is we're actually copying the pointers that we're getting from the different buffers. Uh, I'm using that opportunity to rename them to sort of long variable names so we understand where we're going. So uh, main.xn, which was the input buffer, becomes main input samples. Same thing for the output samples. We're also casting the subchannels as well, but we can ignore that for now. Then we can create a counter, which is effectively the number of samples that we're gonna have to go through. And this is effectively, so we're gonna call this variable main counter, and it's twice the number of frames with the length of the output samples, right? And then we're gonna have, um, I'm gonna have a variable for the left sample and one for the right sample. All right, so that brings us to the main body of the function, which is the main loop. So in there, we're effectively gonna use our counter to loop through all of the input samples. So right now what we're doing is we're pulling, the first sample is gonna be a left sample, we're pulling from that buffer again, and we're gonna get a right sample, and then we're gonna start doing something interesting with the sample in the middle. And once we're done with that, we're gonna actually get push our left sample value and our right sample value back into the output buffer in the right order. Right, so effectively we're pulling from the input buffer, left sample, right sample, doing something with them. We're pushing to the output buffer, left sample, right sample, and then we're done. Okay, so the actual code for the gate is really, really simple, which is why I wanted to use that as an example. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the value of the left sample with the gate threshold value. We're also gonna compare the value of the right sample with the gate threshold. And if any of those is actually bigger than the threshold, we're gonna open the gate or reopen the gate. So we have our gate counter here, which is our variable, and we're gonna set the gate counter to the gate time. So the gate time is how long in the cycles will the gate stay open, right? So as soon as we get a, a sample that reaches the trigger, we pop the gate open, and then we're gonna drain the gate until we run out of samples, in which case we're gonna close, or it's gonna reopen as we get more samples that meet our criteria. So the next few lines of code is where we actually control when the gate is open or closed. So if the gate needs to be closed, which means that we've drained everything from the gate counter, we're gonna send silence by setting the left sample and the right sample to value of zero. If not, if the gate needs to stay open, we're gonna decrement the gate counter by one. If we have a value of 480 samples for our gate, then every time we're gonna go through that, we're gonna remove one from that, and so it's gonna take us 10 milliseconds to close the gate. So let's see if it actually works. All right, so to compile the plugin, all we need to do is type make. Boink. So we've compiled everything, uh, and we have our plugin file, which is this over here, and now we need to send it to the synth. We're gonna switch to the user modulation effect. I'm actually gonna clear the previous version and download this new version here which we got here and then we can send that to the synth yes i understand I can. and then boom we should now have in our list of modulation effects chorus ensemble phaser flanger 
and ta-da! So we now have our gate modulation effects. So I'm gonna set it up so that we can hear it uh, work. Uh, hopefully it's gonna work. And uh, we're pretty much done. Good doggy. Okay, so all we have left to do now is to test the plugin to see if it's working correctly. Uh, so for that, we need a sound source. I've actually brought, this is why we have the uh, awesome Gecko loop synth over here. Uh, the output of the loop synth is actually plugged into the input of the NTS-1. The plugin has already been loaded. I'm gonna turn on the Gecko and we can test that the sound is actually going through and that our noise gate is actually working. Pick a pattern. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, Hello. All right, so uh, we have audio going through and we can hear it. Uh, actually, the proof that it's going through that, let's turn on, uh, what do we got? Let's turn on the flanger. All right, so the flanger is processing our data. And now let's change it to the gate. So this is our gate. Uh, this is our gate time. We're going to make the gate fairly small. And this is going to be the depth. There we go. So we reach a point where we're closing the gate. There we go. 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 Okay. Threshold, even threshold. Bigger. Boom. Uh, and here, let's change the time to make a longer gate. Longer gate. Okay. So it's staying open. Staying open. Staying open. And this is the short gate. All right, success. Let's try this off. Uh, excellent. So uh, this is what I wanted to show today. So we wrote our very first plugin, uh, really, really simple. Uh, gate effect is effectively just you take the samples coming in, you compare their value against the threshold, and then you either let them go through or you smush them to zero. Um, no, actually, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.